I'm Gary Haglin. I'm the uh, president of the Skagit County Caper Chapter. And uh, tonight we're going to be hosting Professor Don Easterbrook uh, from Western Washington University. He's uh, Professor Emeritus. He's in, I wouldn't call what you do retirement now. Um, I, I'm retired from teaching, but I'm not dead yet, and I'm still working full time with my <laughs> wife will attest. You don't, you don't have to deal with students now. Okay. But anyway, I, I thought I'd just mention a little bit about what CAPER is. And CAPER is, uh, it stands for the Citizens Alliance for Property Rights. From our website, uh, it is a nonpartisan activist organization devoted to defending property rights. We welcome the participa participation of like-minded individuals and purposed organization in the cause and our specific goals because we are about property rights. And two, you know, two uh, reasons come to the, to the top of my head. Number one, our people who live, especially in the rural lands and, and everywhere, you are better stewards of your property than anybody in government. But number two, without property rights, you will find that you know, what freedoms you have now will soon be gone. So this is why we are members of this organization. If you're not, we uh, welcome you to join. Okay, why climate? Why are we having two presentations on climate? Um, number one, climate is a pretext to, for further government rules and regulations. But let me say this is a very important issue and that we need to be aware of. <coughs> Ellen? Good evening. My name is Ellen Cooley and I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. What does Don Easterbrook have with everything that, to do with everything Gary talked about? Well. I'll tell you a little bit about Don and a little bit about what he's been up to. Dr. Don J. Easterbrook is Professor Emeritus of Geology at Western Washington University, where he served as Geology Department Chairman for 12 years. He has BS, MS, and PhD degrees from the University of Washington and has studied global climate change for five decades. He has written three textbooks and a dozen other books published more than 185 papers in professional journals and presented 30 research papers at international meetings in 15 countries. It's my pleasure to introduce the man whom Anthony Watts, what's up, what's up with that, recently hailed as a climate scientist who got it right, Dr. Don Easterbrook. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. I never intended that that whole thing be read. When she asked me if I would send something down about my background, I just picked off a boilerplate thing that goes out to a lot of talks like this and said, you know, pick and choose a few things out of this that you want. So I apologize for putting you to sleep with that long litany of things. At any rate, uh, tonight I'm going to talk a bit about uh, global climate, global climate change. And um, in so doing, I'm going to present a lot of data, and so if you don't like graphs, uh, let your eyes glaze over and just listen to the conclusions, which I will say, and if you're interested, the evidence for what I say will be on the screen. This is so that you know that what I'm saying is based on evidence, and it doesn't matter what I believe, the data speaks a lot louder than, than words. I need to use this disclaimer for a number of reasons. Um, You've already heard more than you need to know about me. Uh, two things you also need to know is that I have no particular political persuasion. I have equal disdain for both Democrats and Republicans and what they're doing or not doing in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm not associated with any business or energy group. Uh, I have zero financial interest in what I'm saying and so uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that I have no ax to grind and what I hope to do is to show you some data and some statements that have been made and what the press is saying and let you judge for yourself what you wish to believe. One of the things that I hope you'll take away from what I say 
um, is an open mind. Um, this is one of my favorite sayings. Conclusions based upon preconceived ideas are valueless. It's only the open mind that really thinks. Dogma is an impediment to the free exercise of thought. It paralyzes the intelligence. Think about that. So what I'm asking you to do tonight is to throw out all your previous beliefs uh, and open your mind and look at the data and judge for yourself what the conclusions are from that data. A couple of references that you might want to uh, look at. One is called uh, Evidence-Based Climate Science. This is a book that I edited um, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. It's fairly short, and if you want a, a concise summary of some of the important things about climate, you'll find them there. If you're a glutton for punishment <laughs> or, or need exercise, um, here's a 1,000-page tome, which is the equivalent of the IPCC UN report, only this one contains actual evidence for what's going on with the Earth's climate. In places, it's technical. I don't recommend that you sit down in front of a fireplace and read this uh, for, for evening entertainment, but uh, if, you, if you're interested in knowing more about it, just email me and I can send you uh, via email some reprints from this that you might find interesting. So with that in mind, um, let's get started. Um, what I propose to do tonight is to show you um, some real-time physical evidence for what's going on with the Earth's climate. And you can decide for yourself what's true and what's not true, and you can use this evidence then to judge what you're hearing from TV and news media of various kinds uh, as to its relevance and to whether or not it's true. I'll also in the process um, dwell a bit on how this relates to the Envision 2060 report, which I understand is being used as a basis for planning in Skagit County, and it has a lot of implications uh, for all of you with respect to uh, what happens uh, governmentally. I also need to say just a little bit about the scientific method. And the way that science works is that you create a hypothesis. For example, CO2 causes global warming. That's a hypothesis. We then need to test the hypothesis. And we do that by comparing with direct observations. We experiment and we carry out various kinds of investigations to test it. And the key to the scientific method is that it doesn't make any difference how beautiful your concept is. It doesn't make any difference how smart you are or who made the guess or what his name is. If it disagrees with the experimental or observational, observational evidence, it's wrong. And I'll come back to that. This is what scientists do. It was articulated very well by Richard Feynman, who was a, uh, a physicist from Caltech. Uh, a Nobel Prize winner, a brilliant man, and he articulated the scientific methodology uh, that all of us, or some of us use, I should say. And one of the things that I like to point out is that if there's any exception to a concept that can be proven by observation, then the concept is wrong. That's a basic tenet of all science. So I'm going to show you some things that are wrong with what you've been hearing. And I'm going to suggest then that perhaps that the observations have proven that some of the things you're hearing are not true. And I think you'll be surprised at uh, a number of things that you're being told they are simply not true. As an example, you may be aware that back in the 1920s, Albert Einstein <laughs> formulated the theory of relativity, which threw the entire physics world into a tizzy because it proved that good old Newtonian physics, which had been uh, assumed to be um, invariant for a long, long time, since the days of Newton, was in fact not correct. And physicists were very upset. So some of the world's most eminent physicists formed a committee of 100 of the most um, brilliant physicists in the world whose goal was to prove that Einstein was wrong. And so somebody asked Einstein, <coughs> What do you think about this 100-person committee that's trying to prove you wrong? 
And his response was, I don't know why they need 100, it only takes one. <laughs> so that's what I'm suggesting here. If anything that I show you that you've been hearing that is being claimed by the UN group or by, by anybody is contradicted by direct observational evidence, then it's wrong. So it's also true that no government agency or other authority can decide the truth of a scientific concept. You can't believe something just because the government says it's so. In fact, I don't know why you believe anything the government <laughs> says these days. Um, and something else that, that, um, that Feynman said, which strikes home, is that all scientists are skeptic. If you don't doubt anything, if you take it on a basis of belief, then it's not scientific. Anyone who doesn't doubt, that is anyone who isn't a skeptic, isn't a scientist. It's very simple. I'm known as a skeptic because I'm skeptical of some of the claims that are being made about the Earth's climate. I invite all of you to be skeptics. Be skeptical of what I say tonight. Question it. Ask questions. Look at it. Test it against what you know about uh, what, the, what the Earth is doing. So what is climate science? Have you ever known anybody who got a degree in climate science? It's not a discipline. It's not like physics or chemistry or geology or biology or mathematics. It is a body of, of knowledge which is studied by physicists, by meteorologists, by oceanographers, geologists, geophysicists, geochemists, a whole bunch of people from a variety of disciplines and they focus their interest on climate. That's what a climate scientist is, but there's no such thing as climate science. And there are apparently different rules being used by the people who profess to be climate scientists. Michael Mann, who is widely known for having created the concept of the hockey stick, which we'll talk about later. And basically that is that climate has never changed over thousands of years until we started putting CO2 in the atmosphere and then all of a sudden when the climate started changing. In other words, the long handle is constant climate for thousands of years and the end of the hockey stick uh, is what has happened in the way of warming since we started putting a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere. So this is what Michael Mann said. He actually said this. Proof is for mathematical theorems and alcoholic beverages. It's not for science. Can you believe anybody saying that and calling himself a scientist? And what he said further was, you don't need proof when you have a credible theory. All you need is a theory that enough people will believe. That's his idea, and that's the idea which is being propagated by many people who call themselves climate scientists. And I'm not trying to badmouth him, I'm just telling you the way it is. There was a paper that came out yesterday uh, which was peer-reviewed in a scientific journal that said it's okay to lie about science because the end justifies the mean. Uh, and the, the ends in this case being uh, instilling fear in people to get them to do things that you want them to do. And in the name of science, these two scientists claim it's okay to lie to do that. <laughs> 